Hey, what's up guys and welcome back. If this is the first time we meet, my name is Matt Samolski. I'm Matt the Car Guy and on this channel I do car reviews. Today I'm back here at Mercedes-Benz of Bonita Springs and I'm here with this 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLA 35 AMG. Now this is an entry level into the performance Mercedes-Benz SUVs and today I'm going to take you on a complete tour of this vehicle. So we're going to check it out from the exterior, interior, jump inside of it, play with some cool and interesting features. At the end of this video, you're going to go for a ride together with me now before we do all of that if you haven't already please do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button at the bottom of this video it really helps me out a lot it helps me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year well now let's get back to this So Mercedes-Benz GLA is an entry into the Mercedes SUV world. And some might argue that this is really not an SUV, but more of a hatchback, but that's how Mercedes has it categorized on their website. I think it's kind of a crossover. It's got the best of both worlds and we're gonna go in detail about why I think that. Now, it is the second generation of the GLA and it was fully redesigned for the 2021 model year. I've already done the 250, which is the base model. Shortly after the 35, which is this is a performance model showed up they also have a GLA 45 which is even more powerful as far as the outside looks of the vehicle they are virtually the same now they have some sporty accents and the AMG packages or the night package like this one has that enhances the sporty appearance of it but as far as the sheet metal all three versions have the same ones so let's take a look at the front of this vehicle it does have a fairly long hood for the size of this vehicle. It does have two distinct body lines that go across the entire hood, a smaller Mercedes-Benz logo, and then a huge one in this performance-inspired grille with vertical slots on it. Now you can also see there is a front view camera right here, and behind this Mercedes-Benz logo is where a lot of the safety components hide. Now, this is an AMG, so it wouldn't be an AMG without an AMG badge, right? So it has that right here, and going down right underneath here you can see this nice splitter this is uh, all in the same color as the rest of the vehicle it does have some matte black in here as you can see this one is pretty much all blacked out all of the chrome was replaced by matte black or shiny black in here that's part of that night package and let's take a look at the headlight unit right here those are led high performance lights so they're fully led lights it does have the daytime running lights turn signals everything that's built into here but i want to point out one thing this is definitely an AMG inspired vehicle it does have this well it is a fake slash functional vent because this part right here it's all closed up but it does have a pass through right on the side that helps with the aerodynamics a little bit of cooling off those brakes now let's pop the hood let's see what powers up this AMG vehicle all right guys let's check this out before we look at the engine itself let's take a look at the hood compartment and especially the hood strut right here it is holding the hood nice and tall so this is a big plus in my book now on the hood itself you do have some sound insulation but what lays underneath it it's what's really important now this is the 35 so it's a middle of the road in the gla lineup so what we have is an amg you can see the uh, engine cover right here and it is a 2.0 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine producing 302 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque now you can see that turbo is right in the front over here but what's important to mention too that this is what they call an AMG enhanced engine so if you've been following Mercedes and if you know AMG they're famous for their handcrafted 
engines. Well, this is not one of them. You'd have to step up to the 45 series in order to get the 2.0 liter engine handcrafted and that produces 382 horsepower. Now, this is plenty fast in my opinion. This uh, can send this vehicle zero to 60 in about 5.2 seconds. It's also made it to an eight speed dual clutch transmission and it can send the power to all wheels. If you look at the overall shape of this vehicle, it is truly a cross between the hatchback and the SUV. And it's fairly small. It's 175 inches long. So if you have a smaller garage, worry nothing, you'd be able to fit it in no problem. Now, as far as the design of this vehicle from the side, I like it. What I would like to see probably on the AMG or the Performance Series vehicles is all of that cladding to be in the same color as the rest of the vehicle. As you can see, it's hard to see because because it's black on black, but this is matte black, and this is the shiny black, of course, the color of the vehicle. But let's take a look at the wheel setup. So as far as the wheels, you know, you do have the 19 inch wheels on this one, part of that night package. These are pretty cool actually, and a matte black with the silver trim around it, and that matches basically with this big AMG calipers. Now, if you look at the brakes themselves, the rotors, they are drilled. So for the more of a ventilation, keeping those brakes cool, because you need something pretty strong to stop this vehicle. Turbo formatic right on here, on the mirror itself, you do have the LED turn signals. And as you can see, I just walked up to the car and it locked itself. I can unlock it by sticking my hand inside of the door handle. Uh, now on the door handle, the only part that's chrome right here is on top of it. Everything else is blacked out. You also have black roof rails over here, which you can make usable if you put some crossbars on them. And that's pretty much it as far as the size of the tires, because that's pretty important too. 235 by 50 is the size of the tires and you have the pro contact serious tires from continental so they're fairly sticky tires for a performance vehicle let's move to the back let's see what it looks like i'm gonna tell you this is a very nice looking small suv and uh, this one has some enhancements as far as the sport options on here so first of all you can see it does have that uh, regular gate spoiler right here but it also has a spoiler on top of it that not only looks cool but i'm pretty sure it keeps this vehicle more planted on the ground it does have the wiper in the back the third brake light is right here amg mercedes and the gla 35 all in one row this is bright chrome i kind of wish that maybe this was blacked out as well and then as far as the taillight units they contain everything so that is that your regular tail lights your turn signals your reverse lights and they're fully led pretty good looking kind of continuous with the theme as mercedes is using for all of their other suvs well, maybe with the exception of the GLB. Now, if you scroll down right here, there's of course a backup camera. And then at the bottom here, at the form portion of the bumper, this is all kind of the matte black with only that uh, shiny trim in the middle of here. So let's take a look at what we have. Well, we have this diffuser right in the back and we have two very large exhaust tips that are dressed in this black chrome. We're gonna hear how it sounds before we take it for a spin. But before we do that, let's open up this gate and let's see how much room we have now this is a power lift gate as you can see and you can close it with pushing off the button as well but let's take a look how much room we have in the small suv well because it is considered a compact suv you should not expect a ton of room in the back but quite frankly it does have quite a bit for the class. Now, if you look at this trunk compartment or cargo compartment right here, you'll notice that it has a 12 volt outlet, a light, and then underneath the floor, you'd think it's a spare tire, but no, there is actually a speaker, a bunch of electronics, and that's pretty much it. Just a little bit more storage over here. Now, this cargo, a cover is removable so you can drop it you can take it out and as you can see there's three seats and you can actually fold them down 60 40 but there's no handles to do that from here so you'd actually have to uh well either fold down one of those seats or all of them seats but you'd have to do them from the interior 
I'm sure a pretty important factor for a lot of people when shopping for a small SUV is the roominess in the back. And I have to tell you, I am surprised of how much room it has. Now I'm six feet tall, I've adjusted the front seat to my regular driving position, and I can fit comfortably in the back without touching my knees to the front seat. I also have plenty of headroom and shoulder room. Now, as most of the vehicles, this is a five-seater configuration, but as I say, four people can fit in comfortably or two adults and three kids. Now, the interior is pretty cool. Let's check it out together. Starting with the door panel over here, you can see it is a two-tone and that theme continues throughout the rest of the vehicle. You have a little bit of this gray leather and the top of it is in black vinyl or MB Tex. Now standard, this vehicle would come with MB Tex or Mercedes-Benz, basically a artificial leather. This has been upgraded to a full leather interior and it is two-tone. We'll look at it in just a moment. Now, as far as the door handle, it is pretty cool looking. Uh, fairly uh, muscular door handle if you will and it does have the lock and unlock feature as well as the window control there's also a little bit more storage underneath here now if you look at the seats themselves as i said it is a leather interior on this particular one that is an extra option and that is two-tone kind of an interesting combination you do have some of the contrast stitching in places that i would normally not see contrast stitching like in the middle of those inserts over here now three seat belts are here the third seats are fairly small but it could serve basically as an armrest and the cup holders will stick out from underneath here okay so you can see in the middle you do have a little bit of bump and then you have your vents for the back which is important even for a small suvs and over here you do have a regular household outlet as well as two usb c ports so that's innovative and you have uh, some cargo nets not huge on that but they do the trick let's hear how it sounds when you close the door Boom, pretty nice and solid as Mercedes should be. Let's take a quick look at the front door panel. Now you can see it is more luxurious than the rear one. You do have some carbon fiber trim in here. You also have your seat adjustments for the front seat. And this one has the ventilated and heated seat package. It also has three memory seat uh, positions as well as it does have your window mirror and lock controls over here over here is where you open your back hatch if you wanted to and then right underneath here over at the bottom you do have a little bit more storage on the door sill you do have the amg logo now let's take a look at the seats now the seats they look sporty, right? But they're not overly aggressive. Same kind of two-tone design as we've seen in the back. I've sat in it, I've driven it, they're fairly comfortable. Now, as far as the tie support, it is adjustable. It is a manual adjustment, but you can do that. And over here, you do have some more lumbar support settings. Now, if you look at the pedals over here, typical sports car, right? You have aluminum with the rubber studs on it, so your feet don't slip. Now let's take a look at the rest of this yeah, interior of this 2022 GLA 35 AMG. And I gotta tell you, if you've watched any of my previous Mercedes-Benz videos, I love the modern Mercedes-Benz interiors. Look at this, there's a lot of going on. You can customize a ton. You know, you can see right on top of here, there's a good view right now. We have a good view of the ambient lighting that can be fully customized. As you can see, it's changing colors right now. So it's playing the animation but it can also be adjusted to whatever you like you have the ambient lighting not only alongside here and right on top but also inside of the vans what's pretty cool about those vans and we're going to go back to that but if i set the temperature higher for this side you can see that this van turned red while the other remained the same that's only while i'm doing it uh, but that just tells you whether you're heating or uh, cooling the vehicle so you know as far as the interior one of the most important features is the roominess right so I move this seat all the way back now I'm six feet tall and I'm pretty sure you don't want to look at my legs but you know the point is 
I can barely touch the pedals with the seat moved all the way back. So there's tons of room, even for a very tall person, I believe. Now the interior is very nice uh, to look at, right? It also has some premium accents. It does have this carbon fiber trim right here. It does have the contrast stitching right on top of the dashboard. And it does have the dual 10.25 inch screens. Now this is a performance vehicle, so it does have a performance steering wheel. It is flat at the bottom. It does have AMG right at the bottom here. It is all aluminum, very nice to the touch. And it does have those huge pedal shifters in the back. Now, like with any of the Mercedes bands, uh, it is premium. The quality is there. You do have an Alcantara plus leather and aluminum on the steering wheel. How more premium can you get? Now, the steering wheel itself, it is just like on all of the other premium Mercedes all of the other new Mercedes Benzes, it is multifunctional and basically what's going on on the left hand side is everything that controls the left screen and the right hand side controls the right screen. So let's take a closer look at this. Now, first of all, you do have a little bit of a trackpad in here and that's instead of having like a joystick that controls what you want to select in the screen. There's a little home button that always takes you to the main settings on the screen. We're going to show it to you in a second. And then there's a back button in case you get lost. You go to the previous setting that you were at. Now set up and down. This is for your cruise control and then you can uh, turn it on and off and then you can adjust the speed up and down if you're cruising on it. Now cancel button is right here and then let's see what's going on in our first screen over here. So I should probably do a separate video on the MBUX because it's such a beautiful system and it has so many features that it's virtually impossible just to do a quick review on the car to go over all of them. But this is customizable so if you hit your home screen right here it shows you of what's available. Phone navigation, AMG performance, so if you look at this, you can see right there, this is not your speedometer, this is your tachometer, and that's what's important. Your speedometer is actually right on the side over here. We'll go back to the main settings. You can see your trip, okay, from reset, etc. Go back, and then radio, media, design, and display. And this is where you can actually change the display, okay? So you can have a sport display, and let's see how it changes. And we go back and we can uh, basically change that to where's my design and display right here uh, classic which is the basic display on the mercedes-benz they're all cool and it depends on which one you like the most um, you can set up with this now as far as the classic design you can see you do have your speedometer on the left hand side and then the tachometer on the right hand side but there's a lot more but we're going to go through some of the other features on this side right here so on the right hand side yeah, again same theme you can hit the home button and then you can see phone navigation by the way i do have my phone connected to it navigation system it's a pretty large screen for navigation and mercedes also has a very nice navigation system so now it's uh has also the voice control which is triggered by the word hey mercedes and i think that's what it heard me say so we're going to just basically turn that off for a second and go back to the main menu we can uh, radio media comfort performance so let's take a look at the comfort okay because that's where your seat kinetics are going to be and then you can start playing it so that kind of gives you that massage like feature and then you can also change the ambient lighting and mercedes prides itself of providing probably the most colors for ambient lining if you like so see multicolor multicolor animation right now that's what it's playing that's adjusting to the climate control so that's why you can uh, change the different uh, basically the different lights like when you are uh, heating or cooling the vehicle and you can change the different themes right there now if you're more of a one kind of uh, color person you can select a single color and you know the entire vehicle is going to turn i think that's probably going to be the uh, weirdest color because i'm not a big green fan but check this out everything 
you know, instead of having a multicolor, everything around is turning green. So you can customize it to your liking. And uh, I'm actually gonna get out of this uh, green color. I like that ocean blue probably the most. And, but that's where you do it. Now you go back to your home screen. Now, one of the things about Mercedes Benz that you can basically control these two screens uh, through a bunch of different features. First of all, you know, it is off of the steering wheel. So those two touchpads on the steering wheel. Second of all, you can control it by voice using, hey, Mercedes. And then she's talking to me right now and I don't want her to talk to me. Okay. Um, now, uh, the third one is the touch screen and then the fourth one is actually a touchpad that's located right underneath here. And while some of the touchpads that I've seen on other vehicles might be cumbersome and really hard to use, this is very easy to use and very intuitive. But let's go back to this main screen and see what else we have here. This is a performance vehicle, so let's take a look at what we have in the performance settings. Uh, G meter, right, you have your acceleration, braking percentage. Then you go to the engine settings and then you have your engine data from here. So the performance as far as the horsepower, the torque, the temperature for the oil and for the transmission. I have your consumption and then you have the dynamic select. Now the dynamic select are basically the different drive modes that you have. That's what Mercedes calls them. Now you do have the individual configuration which you can select any of those uh, items right here and you can change them so let's say drive moderate reduced sport dynamics so i'm going to leave that in sport uh, just missed that okay and then go back transmission dynamic suspension that's basically what you can change now if you don't want to mess around with this they have pre-programmed uh, drive modes and we're going to go to that in the second mercedes me and apps so as far as the smartphone uh, there is um, and my device is connected so that's another thing that I want to point out that it does have Android Auto Apple CarPlay however you need to have a USB to connect it with which you know it is a ding for me to Mercedes uh, vehicle settings you know assistance vehicle light system operators manual there's so many different settings that you can change in here the back camera is uh, covered so it's under cover right and uh, you know you can open the camera cover and, and the reason uh, you would want to do it is to clean that camera for example without uh, putting it in reverse and risking let's uh, put it in reverse and let's see how the rear view camera looks like so it does have a very nice clarity as far as the uh, camera and it does have basically two different angles so it has a wide angle and a narrow angle and that is it on this particular one now so i'll give it a plus for the quality of the camera i'll give it a minus for the amount of space that it's using on that screen i think it should be a lot bigger in my opinion now that's your other screen and then scrolling down in here you have those big round vans kind of go with the theme of this vehicle you have them all over the place and if you didn't want to mess around on the panel over here you can actually do adjustments on your climate control so you can do it right on top and do a touch screen uh, if you wanted to or you can do it old school way and basically do it with the hard buttons that are located right here so there's a bunch of shortcuts for your a climate control now scrolling down see it's nicely illuminated you have a little bit of storage right in here i didn't see a sign for the charging for the wireless charging in here so i assume this one doesn't have it i know it is available and then you also have the usb-c as well as the regular 12 volt adapter so you have cup holders down here and this is your trackpad now trackpad is pretty large it's pretty intuitive it's sensitive but it's not overly sensitive and i found it really really easy to learn and get used to it and then it comes with this palm rest right here so um, your hand or yeah it's actually very comfortable on here it also has a bunch of buttons around it so let's go through some of those together the dynamic this is that toggle switch basically it controls your uh, modes so now we were in the sport plus mode sport comfort individual and slippery those are the modes that are available i'm going to move it back to sport plus that's where i want to test it out at then on the other side you have the volume button and the power button this is how you uh, turn on or off your audio system navigation map 
radio, media, telephone. That's pretty much self-explanatory. Now, this is your favorite button. You can create your uh, theme, basically. You can set it up uh, the way you want it. And this is your assistance button. So that turns on the screen with all of the assistance features that this vehicle has. Now, around this palm rest right here, you also have a couple of hard buttons. And this is basically for your adjustment of your gear. So yeah, see, there you go. You push that manual adjustment. We're in the Sport Plus, and then it's gonna enable the pedal shifters on the sides over here. And also on the other side, you have a suspension and then on this side, you have a traction control, so you can turn that on or off. Moving down here, you know, in a typical Mercedes fashion, you have this double door type of feature. That's your opening for the storage. And the storage is quite deep for a small vehicle that it is. And it also has another USB-C port. Now, in addition, you know, as far as the storage, you do have your glove box, which is right here. And it's a fairly nice glove box. And it also has a little lit shelf over here, just in case you want to put your cell phone in there or whatever you want to put on top of it. Now, right on top of here, you have the regular mirrors. Now you have the lights that can be turned on or off, of course. And then you have the Mercedes Me and the SOS. As far as the mirrors, they're illuminated from the top on driver and passenger side. This particular vehicle does not have a moonroof. And uh, I, honestly, I haven't seen a feature for panoramic sunroof maybe because it's a chip shortage right now. But that's the interior of it. I can't wait to take it for a spin. Well, here comes my favorite part of making the video, and that is to take the vehicle on the road, kind of check out the driving dynamics. It is a dealer vehicle. It's a brand new car. So out of respect for both the dealer and the future owner, I'm not really going to push it too hard. However, I want to check out of how it accelerates, how it brakes, how it corners, and the regular driving dynamics. And we're going to check it out in two different modes. I'm going to check it out in the sport mode, maybe even sport plus, and then I'm going to flip it to the comfort mode, which is basically an everyday use of a vehicle. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, GLA is an entry level into Mercedes SUVs and the GLA 250 is what base model is. Now, Mercedes prides itself to start making vehicle for under $40,000. The GLA 250 is one of them. It starts at 36 dollars with the uh, front wheel drive and it also goes for the 38 for two thousand dollars more if you opt in for an all-wheel drive unit now this is significantly higher because this vehicle is about 47 950 starting msrp and this one is just about fifty five thousand dollars so it's got a bunch of added options that are not standard on even the gla 45 and i'm going to list them all in the description of this video so you have a better understanding of what you're getting standard and whatnot and if you really wanted to move up to that beast to the 4.4 second gla 445 then you're going to have to shell out 55.4 for the base vehicle so uh, what's it worth to you i'm not sure check it out yourself but let's take it for a spin we're going to get out of this parking structure and uh, while doing that i'm going to check out the turning on this vehicle because there's a lot of sharp corners over here that we need to maneuver through and here's one we're going to basically do like 180 degree turn which is really nice okay i thought i was going to clip that uh, column right there but not such a thing here's another 180 like i said pretty tight parking structure and we made it again so it is a very tight turning like on most of the mercedes you'll see that they turn on a dime and there's a few bumps on the road like the speed bumps but i want to also check out of how this vehicle absorbs it now we're in the stiffer setting in here because we're in the sports mode and you can definitely feel the speed bumps, but that's what they're there for. So, so nothing crazy. We're going to feel a little bit of a pull here. Very nice, very smooth acceleration. Now we're in the Sport, not Sport Plus. Let's quickly flip it to Sport Plus. And I don't see a huge 
difference in performance like right away but what I'm gonna do here is slow down a little bit and then hit it that's what I'm talking about now you could hear the engine I'm pretty sure she did and uh, the, the transmission shifts so quick and so well with this eight-speed dual clutch transmission it's crazy I'm uh, actually tempted to uh, ch check it out in the manual mode in here and see if we can uh, lower the gears so yeah gear four you can feel it and then we can start pulling at gear five six and then if you wanted to reduce it and hit it there you go there's a lot of pull for here let's put it in the fully automatic one there you go i think that's a nice and very fluid acceleration it's uh, I, I can't even imagine what the 45 will feel like now with the 5.2 seconds zero to 60 you know especially us car reviewers we're looking at it and like hey psh, 5.2 you know I've had cars that are 4.5 4.6 but it's also a difference of a how to get there and then the realization that it's really a quick vehicle now I worked for Honda for many many years and I remember when the first s2000 came in and this vehicle was from the factory it was 0 to 16 5.9 seconds and everybody goes like wow Honda has an under six second car now that was 20 some years ago and fast forward 2000 2022 we have a hybrid vehicles or a family SUVs that are in the low four seconds or even the electric vehicles right now that are under two seconds zero to 60 which is extremely fast extremely dangerous and extremely fun too automotive industry have changed dramatically in the last quarter century but that's a long time too overall you know speaking about this GLA 35 it is a very pleasant to drive vehicle it is definitely something in between if you don't want just a regular plain GLA 250 you get this for that extra tooth for that extra power that you might need out of that or you can get the base GLA 45 now the big difference between the GLA 35 and the 35 is the 45 is a true AMG which means it's a handcrafted engine it was built by one technician it's got that signature of it I'm pretty sure it does have a bigger turbo and a little different programming as far as that and hence it goes 4.2 seconds 0 to 60 which is a lot faster than this one a whole second faster now let's do it one more time Okay, we're not gonna push it too hard, but we got to 60 in no time, and I love it. I mean, it's a lot of fun to drive if you're looking for something that uh, it's got that extra edge. Definitely look at the GLA 35 AMG if you're anywhere in Florida. You know, check out the guys at Mercedes Benz of Bonita Springs. A really good group of people. They'll help you out, and they have two in stock at the moment of this filming so guys thank you very much for watching if you haven't already please do me a favor hit that subscribe button it helps me out a lot it doesn't really cost you anything help me get to my 10,000 subscriber mark by the end of this year and i'll see you in my next video cheers